Can you stand with me this morning? We want to welcome you to week four of Christmas at the movies. Thank you for joining us in worship this morning. Let's lift up the Lord. Good. 
time your goodness is running after me can we just declare that out together Thank you for your grace that follows us everywhere that we go, that finds us wherever we find ourselves. We thank you, Lord, for who you are. Whatever you stand in need of this morning, 
Remind yourself of what he is. Way make miracle work, promise keep light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. You are way make miracle work, promise keep light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. You are him. You are here.
unto God with the voice of triumph. Let's do that right now. Give a great hand clap of praise to the Lord, our Savior. Oh, hallelujah, Lord. You are the miracle worker. You are the promise keeper. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Praise your holy name. You know, when you think about Christmas, <clears throat> the wonder of Christmas, one of the great miracles, it all started with a great miracle, didn't it? Amen. Didn't it start with a great miracle when here's, the, here's a young teenage lady who says, <laughs> how can I have a child? Uh, I've never known a man and, and I don't, I'm not about to start now, more or less is what she was saying. And he says, well, the angel said, well, the Holy Spirit's going to come upon you and you will conceive. That's that immaculate conception. That is a marvelous miracle. Christmas started with the miracle. The wonder of it all started with the miracle of his birth. Amen. And then it continues. My goodness, he lives a sinless life. He goes to the cross substituting himself for all of us sinful creatures and humanity and he sheds his blood on the cross and he dies he's buried in a borrowed tomb and on the third day guess what marvelous miracle of resurrection he comes to life again and he rises up amen he ascends to heaven takes the throne beside his father and one day he's coming back for all who would believe on him that's a miracle all together, amen? He's the miracle worker. Now, someone today here, someone today here, prophetic word came this morning in the first service saying that, you know, it doesn't matter what you're going through. He's the miracle worker. And then they testified to the fact that God had brought some miracles in their own household of reconciliation, forgiveness among family members, beautiful power of the Holy Spirit. You need a miracle today, he's the miracle worker. Listen, I'm glad to see the kids in here today and I think it's great for them to see what God is doing right here, right now. Someone needs a miracle today. I encourage you right now just to step out. If you're already up here, step up. But step out and say, Pastor, I need a miracle of healing or we need a miracle, maybe in your family or your extended family. You say, we need a miracle in our family. I want you to step out and come up front here. Maybe it's a miracle of finances. Maybe it's a miracle of physical healing. Maybe it's a miracle of restoration, reconciliation. Whatever it may be, maybe, you know, we, God is going to, he's the miracle worker. Amen? And he wants to touch your heart and life right here, right now. So you made your way to the front? All right. Come on, step up here. Let's just, let's just, would you just stretch out? We're all family here today. And if our prayer warriors, our trained prayer team would like to come and stand beside these or pray with these, I encourage you. I, I don't. I, I like it when our prayer team comes because they're submitted to the authority of the church and they're in alignment with what God is doing with us. So that also you know who's praying for you. Amen. Let's just stretch out your arms, family of God. Stretch out your arms. Let's just begin to pray. Pray however God leads you. Pray, though, for these, because there's some financial needs, career needs, family needs here represented, physical needs represented. Just believe God right now. Let's just begin to pray right now. Father God, in the name of Jesus, I, I just believe you. We come together right now for Mike's healing. God, we believe in the good report. He's received a report from the doctors, Lord. But, Lord, we will believe the report of the Lord. In the name of Jesus, Mike, be well. In the name of Jesus, be well. Thank you, Jesus. 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 Come here, Tyler. Let's pray. Father, thank you for supplying every need. Jesus, we come in agreement again. God, Almighty God, thank you for the miracle of supply. Thank you for the miracle of supply. She will behold your supply. 
and she will testify of the goodness of the Lord. In Jesus' name. <laughs> hallelujah, hallelujah, Lord. God, thank you for it. Devil, you can't steal her joy. Her joy is based on her relationship with Jesus. Thank you for the joy of the Lord that is her strength, oh God. And she will testify of your goodness, Lord. Thank you for that, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you for the testimony, the power of your grace. Thank you for the power of your grace, O oh Lord. Going further than we could ever imagine, O oh God. Your grace. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Uh, thank you for your healing power manifested right now. Father, we pray for all the church family right here, those that are here, those that cannot be with us today. Some, oh Lord, who have been, God, who, who, who Lord, contracted the virus, Lord, others who are sick in other manner. Lord, we believe you for healing in their bodies. And we just proclaim, Lord, wellness in our church family and our extended family. And God, also, let there be just a, a rush of your healing and strengthening power throughout our community, Lord. God, let this, uh, what has been a rise of COVID, let it be stifled right now, Lord God. And let us witness your, your awesome power in the name of Jesus. Thank you. Thank you for your healing. Thank you for your healing. <laughs> praise God I'm glad to hear that someone said how you feeling now I'm better praise God amen here's what's going to happen we're going to hear the testimonies of these as God has touched their life I'm looking forward to that looking forward to hearing the good report of the Lord God bless you all Welcome, folks. So glad you could join us today in this online worship experience. Thank you for worshiping with us, and thank you for celebrating the birth of Christ today with us. I'm so glad to be pastor in Abundant Life Community Church in this community in southwest Indiana. And wherever you may be at this hour, we're so thankful for you. If you're our guest, perhaps you are joining us in this experience for the first time. Please let us know. Just simply type the word guest uh, to the uh, number 812-853-3437. And if perhaps you need prayer uh, for any reason, simply text, text the word prayer at that same number, 812-853-3437. We would love to connect with you, and we'd love to come alongside you. And also, we want to believe God for the miracle you may need in your home and your family or your business. So thank you for worshiping with us today. Now, I've been letting the people of Abundant Life know and our family know because we are a generous, a generous family of uh, believers that this Christmas, we, we want to celebrate it by bringing a Christmas offering to the Lord in order to help uh, in a few ways. First of all, with our local church family and those families due to various experiences, uh, perhaps, uh, from COVID or any other shutdowns they've experienced or any hardships they've experienced, we want to bless them with a Christmas gift to lift their spirits and to really uh, encourage their hearts and their home, their kids perhaps. So we'd love to do that through this Christmas offering. We'd also like to support our local, local missionaries and our foreign missionaries. Many have not been able to travel and raise support. Many have not been able to go back to the field and they're lacking in their support and their partnership. So we'd like to join the partners that we have in our community, and we'd like to join with the partners we have throughout the world by bringing them a Christmas 
offering as well. And then also we simply have some needs that we have at the church for our physical plant, such as replacing some carpet that's been worn out and needs to be, needs to be changed out. So perhaps you have a heart for facilities and you'd like to give an offering. Perhaps you have a heart to change the world and you want to support missions, or perhaps you have a heart to heal and help hurting homes and you'd like to bring an offer. And you can do this by simply going to the various means that we show on our screen, uh, by mailing a check. You can drop it by the church offices uh, next week before Christmas Eve. You can uh, send it online, and whenever you uh, use the online services at our website, be sure to simply put in the, in the box Christmas offering. And the same thing with our texting service, you can give via that way as well. And so always please make a note that it's your Christmas offering. So thank you for sharing the love of Christ with our family and our friends and uh, with uh, our facilities as well. God bless you and thank you for giving. Be sure to hang on here because at the end of the message, we're going to have a, a time of communion to celebrate the birth of Christ as his community comes together throughout the world to celebrate his birth. And so please Stay with us, and uh, let's celebrate by uh, uh, the Lord's Supper at the close of this message. So let's go and uh, be prepared by going to Romans chapter 3, 23. In just a few moments, I'll read from there. But I, I, we are, we're currently in a sermon series entitled Christmas at the Movies. We've had a blast the last few weeks. Today is the final day of that sermon series. Now, in person, we're able to show the clips, uh, illustrate the points. Today, and as always, via online, we're not able by law to show the clips. So I will be using, though, the same clips as an illustration. I'll have to tell you the story. Uh, but nonetheless, we're following uh, and using the movie A Christmas Carol for our illustrations of the principles uh, of, of the Word of God that we want to preach this morning. And so let's think about it like this. First of all, Christmas reminds us that redemption is the beautiful carol of Christmas for all humanity. I'll say that again. Christmas reminds us that redemption is the beautiful carol of Christmas for all humanity. Hey, God gave his only begotten son. Amen? So in, in, in the movie, the, uh, A Christmas Carol, and uh, Ebenezer Scrooge is shown early on, right away, shown to be a mean, selfish, uncompassionate, unfeeling, unkind, hard-hearted, and besides all that, he was also very stingy. And when I say stingy, I mean wickedly stingy, which means this simply. He thought, he thought if sick people died, it was a good thing because it would decrease the surplus of those in hospitals uh, and the population of the world. He also thought that the taxes he paid was given towards helping the poor through the institutions that the governments had. He also thought that Christmas was an overrated, sentimental, wasted day off of work, which he loathed any idea of not spending all day at work. The bottom line, he was a sinner. He was a sinner bound for a cruel and wicked judgment. Now, as you recall the movie, perhaps if you've seen it, you know that his former business par partner, who's been dead now for several years, uh, Mr. Marley, Marley appears to him as a ghost. However, when he appears as a ghost in his bedroom, he's, he's covered with chains and heavy weights. He, he looks a mess, and it takes, it, takes, uh, it takes him back a bit. And he, he has a conversation with him, but the, the idea of Marley coming back is that he speaks of his wages of sin. And because of his wages of sin, he's carrying these heavy chains and, and the burdens 
uh, 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 business, so to speak, throughout his eternity. And it's a gruesome, ugly scene. And so he comes to offer Scrooge. He says he was sent to offer Scrooge hope. And that is hope for redemption. He says the hope will come through the visitation of three ghosts that particular night, which was Christmas Eve. He speaks of the ghost of the Christmas past, and he speaks of the ghost of Christmas present, and he speaks of the ghost of the Christmas yet to come. And that if Scrooge listens to their advice and is able to change his heart and really repent, then he would have the hope of redemption, and then he's gone. I want you to understand that redemption is the beautiful carol of Christmas. There is hope, my friend. And the first scene of the ghost of Christmas reveals Scrooge, uh, how he chose money, how he chose money over the love of his fiance. He is set to be married, but he's so busy at work, he just occupies himself at his job site, his business. And he loses the love of his life. But really, it wasn't a true love. She loved him, but he loved money more than her. And so she releases him, and she and she gives him up, and she says, you can go and more or less serve your money, serve your God. And so he does. And because of that, he loses the opportunity to have the beautiful family he could have had. So here's the principle and the truth I want you to understand. First of all, everyone has a past, and it is ugly. And that was the purpose of the Christmas of uh, the ghost of Christmas past was to show how ugly his past was. Whether it be a neglected boy raised by a, a, a demanding father who didn't want him around, sent him off to boarding school, sent him off to an apprenticeship and never wanted him to be with him anymore, and, and, and how he conducted himself as a, as a lonely, miserable businessman in his young adulthood and growing into his adult life as well how he was a miser, how he didn't want to help the poor, how he didn't want to help anybody. The truth is, everyone has a past, and it's ugly. You see, Christmas came because all of us, as the Scripture says in Romans 3, 23, all of us have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. Christmas came because only the Holy Son of God could save us from our sinful past. And Christmas came because one way or another, we all have a little Scrooge in us. <laughs> An unkind heart, a selfish mindset, a stingy purse, uh, a better than others and condescending attitude perhaps, an unforgiving heart, uh, maybe a hard head and a cold heart. The truth is, we sin because we are born to sin, so to speak. We sin because we're sinners. And just as it was for Scrooge, his nature to be greedy and love money, we have been born with a nature to sin. Now, maybe we worship possessions. Maybe we worship our position in life. Or maybe we worship our popularity more than God. Together, that friend means we are committing idolatry. And that is a sin that God hates. That is a sin as well as all these other sins and all of sins. That is a sin that is ugly. It separates us from God. And anything that separates us from God is not pretty to God. It is ugly. Now, the ghost of Christmas present takes Scrooge through various scenes of his life, so to speak, currently going on. And the ghost takes him to a family, uh, Bob Cratchit's family. And he wants him to witness there how that this family 
has a love for God and a love for one another, and they have a holy fear of God. And it was there, Tiny Tim's family, uh, that it's revealed how Tiny Tim is so sick and he's near, he's near death. Now, Scrooge witnesses this, and he's standing there with the Spirit, and he asks the Spirit about if there's any hope for the boy and how long he will live. And the Christmas present is honest with him, saying he doesn't see a place for him at the table any longer in the not-too-distant future. It begins to heart, soften the heart of Scrooge. But can I tell you what? A softened heart alone won't change his past, as well as a softened heart alone for you won't change your past. Feeling sorry for yourself won't change your past. Wishing things were different, wishing you could go back and change things, won't change your past. And it won't change your present. And it won't change what is yet to come. If your heart does not truly change, there will be no change. Here's the truth with this. All of us are held to the same standard. All humanity is held to the same standard. And can I tell you, it is a holy standard. Hebrews 12 verse 14 says that it says to make make every effort to live in peace with everyone and to be holy. For without holiness, no man will see the Lord. In other words, we'll never enter God's good heaven. Our future yet to come will not include heaven. It will be a place of of separation from God, a place the Bible calls hell. We will live forever chained to the guilt of our past, to the wages of our sin. We will be separated from God. We will be separated from anything and all things that are good and beautiful and lovely and admirable and happy. We will be separated from all of that because God is holy. As the Word of God says in Romans chapter 3, verse 22, this righteousness or holiness is given through faith in Jesus Christ for all who believe. So we're held to the same standard. And that's really, in a sense, fair. It's equal. No matter where you come from, no matter where you live, no matter your socioeconomic level, all of us are called to the same standard. But it's a standard we cannot maintain ourselves. It is only given to us by the grace of Jesus Christ when he forgives us our sins and gives us a new heart. We see then that the ghost of Christmas yet to come, which is presented as the scariest of all, all the ghosts, he takes Scrooge through various scenes of the future, including a revisit to the Cratchit's home. At this time, though, Tiny Tim has passed away, and they are grieving over him. And they're, (coughs) excuse me, they're calling each other together to love one another, care for one another, just as Tim loved them and just as they loved Tim. So they're having a time (coughs) of sorrow and suffering. And he sees this, and it moves us, it moves him. And he's beginning to be stricken by this. And then, when he says, okay, I'm good now, take me back to my home. I'm good. I've got the message, so to speak. You know, I can change on my own. Oh, no. The Spirit takes him to a graveyard. And there he points him to a particular grave. Now, at this juncture, he's thinking it's someone else's grave. He's thinking surely someone else has died. And he's wondered who it is. Perhaps he's taken him to the graveside of Tiny Tim. When all of a sudden, as he brushes away the snow off the graveyard marker, he sees his own name there. And he realizes, just as Marley had predicted, he sees his future doom. And it terrifies him. And he begins, under all the conviction presented by the ghost, he begins to cry out in repentance. There at the grave, he's crying out in repentance. And there... All of a sudden, he's back to his room, and in the course of the night, he has prayed prayers of repentance. He's telling, he's saying and claiming 
that he will change his heart. He will change his life. He will make amends. He will do what Matthew, the apostle of Jesus Christ, did when he repented. He says, if I owe any man, I'll pay him back four times. In other words, I'll make restitution. He's promising and making these claims, and he's crying out in repentance. It really becomes a beautiful scene and a beautiful sight. When all of a sudden, he wakes up to the fact that he is a new man. I want you to see this truth. The third point of this message. No one is irredeemable. Everyone can be redeemed. You see, it's not my place to say, oh, no, that guy, he's beyond all hope. That woman, forget about her. Oh, no, my friend, God never forgets. They're never out of the reach of God's love. They're never out of the reach of God's mercy. They're never out of the reach of God's grace. And my friend, you are not out of reach of God's power of redemption. Christ was born on Christmas morning so that he could live and die so you and I could be born again. I'd like to take you to 1 Timothy chapter 1, verses 12 through 15. In the modern English version, it says it like this. I thank, this is the Apostle Paul. He says, I thank Christ Jesus our Lord who has enabled me because he counted me faithful and appointed me to the ministry. I was previously a blasphemer and a persecutor and an insolent man, but I was shown mercy because I did it ignorantly and in unbelief. The grace of our Lord overflowed with the faith and love which is in Christ Jesus. This is a faithful and worthy, this is a faithful saying, excuse me, and worthy of all acceptance that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners of whom I am the worst. That's what the Apostle Paul says. I was the worst of sinners. And my friend, it really wouldn't hurt you to think of yourself like that either. God, I know my sins brought Jesus to Calvary. God, I know you would never have to give your only son. You would never have needed to have Christmas morning were it not for my sins. The Holy Son of God would not have needed to leave his holy throne were it not for my sins. Were it not. You see, friend, no matter how ugly your past was, you can be redeemed. No matter how unholy your present life is, you can be redeemed. No matter how you see your life yet to come, it can be redeemed. How is that? Do what the Bible says to do. Repent and turn back to God. Acts chapter 3 verse 19 says it like this, And now you must repent and turn back to God so that your sins will be removed. That word removed means to be obliterated, to be forgotten completely, to be out of sight, and particularly out of God's sight. And he says, And so that times of refreshing, will stream from the Lord's presence. Now, how do you know that you've truly repented? And how will others know that you've truly repented and you've turned back to God? <sighs> Here's the key. True repentance is a change of heart, mind, and deeds. Now, again, there in the movie, it's a beautiful sight to see Scrooge repent and then wake up on Christmas morning experiencing the refreshing stream that comes with true repentance. The stream is of jubilance, and he begins to jump up and down. He begins to dance around. He begins to shout. He begins to celebrate. He's celebrating now Christmas Day, and then he begins to move out in new actions. Yes, he begins to produce what we call the fruit unto repentance. First of all, he goes and helps the Cratchit with Tiny Tim's medical bills and needs. He goes and celebrates Christmas Day with his nephew for the first time ever. He gives a generous give to help the poor 
And so he opens up his heart, and he also, he doubles his employee wages, his salaries. And it, it, it just blows all of their minds. They can't believe, is this really Scrooge doing this? Well, it was. He changed his mind, his life, his heart so much, his deeds so much, that as he helped Tiny Tim with his medical needs, seeing him live and not die, that Tiny as he grows, Tiny Tim as he grows, he sees Ebenezer Scrooge as a second father in his life. You see, that's fruit unto repentance. I think it's a beautiful example. It's a beautiful story written by Charles Dickens. Now let me ask you this, friend. How about you? The message of Christmas is a message of hope. Hope for your redemption. Jesus, the only Son of God, was born so that you could be born again. So that you could be forgiven and come to know God personally. So that you could find freedom and find it now. So that you could discover your purpose and begin to serve your fellow man. And so that you could make a difference in the world. Now, if you're ready to repent and receive God's redemption redemption in your life, please pray with me right now. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, I want to thank you for giving your only begotten Son, Jesus Christ. He came on Christmas morning and was born to live, to die, so that I could live and live with him forever, for all eternity. I confess my sins right now, and I ask you to forgive me of my sins. I repent, and I turn back to you, God. Please forgive me. I invite you, Jesus, to come and live in my heart. Be the leader of my life. Be the Lord of my life. And I will serve you forever. I thank you that you have forgiven me. And I thank you that you have written my name in the Lamb's Book of Life. And that I will live with you forever. Thank you for helping me to live for you and with you by your power in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, friend, if you prayed that prayer, please help me help you. Text the word SAVED to that phone number, 812-853-3437. And again, if, if you would like prayer, please text the word PRAYER to 812-853-3437. Right now, I would like to take a few moments and close this day of Christmas celebration. I'd like to have a time of communion with you and your family if you have any elements. Perhaps you do have grape juice. Perhaps you do have some kind of cracker, unleavened bread. Uh, but whatever you have, be it any kind of juice, we're going to sanctify it and call it good, okay? Whatever kind of bread you have, we're going to sanctify it and call it good for this communion time. What is communion all about anyway? What is the Lord's Supper? It's a time of remembrance. It's a time of, of a family gathering celebrating the giving of our Lord Jesus Christ and his life for us. The fact that he shed his blood on Calvary so that our sins could be washed away and we could be redeemed. The Bible says without the shedding of blood, there is no redemption. It was Jesus who shed his blood for our redemption. So communion is a time to celebrate and to to give God thanks for the shedding of his blood. But also, it's a time to recognize by eating of the bread that we have a healing, spirit, soul, and body. And the healing is that we are made united and one with God. And you know what? We're made one with the whole family of God. Every born-again believer, every follower of Jesus Christ has now become our brother and sister in the Lord. And so it unites us worldwide. It goes across all uh, ethnic groups. It goes across all cultures. It goes across all generations. It's the most beautiful family in all the world. All colors, all cultures, all races. It doesn't matter where. We're all part of God's big family. So let's do that right now. Let's begin by the 
uh, eating of the bread and giving him thanks for his broken body. Dear Lord Jesus, thank you for giving your body to be beaten, to be scourged so horribly, so horribly. But by doing so, your healing, your stripes are healing for our bodies, healing for our souls, our minds, our emotions. But also, as we partake of it, we are united with you, Jesus. So thank you right now for your body. We receive it this morning, this Christmas Sunday morning, in Jesus' name. Okay, here's something different. I wasn't planning on this, but I just had a sense from the Lord. There's such power in receiving the Lord's bread. I just believe someone who's been he, who's really been suffering with arthritis in your right hand and going up your arm. It has been very painful, more acute here lately. I just believe and sense that God has healed you. Uh, I got to tell you, I've never done that before in a recorded message. But I think the Spirit knows. Would you please let us know what God's done for you? Text the word HEALED or ARTHRITIS HEALED to that number, 812-853-3437. Would you simply do that and claim that healing? Amen. Then for all of us who maybe you have just repented a few minutes ago, and prayed that prayer with me uh, and put your faith in Jesus Christ for the first time in your life. Or maybe you've returned to God. But all of us who've been born again, part of the family of God right now, we want to thank him for the blood of Jesus. Lord Jesus, we thank you right now for your holy and precious and powerful blood that pays for our redemption. You, you brought us back to fellowship with you. And we thank you. We receive this gift of salvation and we rejoice right now for the life of redemption it brings to us and eternal life that it gives to us. We thank you, Lord Jesus, and we praise you in your name. Amen. Let's take together. Praise the Lord. Father God, I thank you for this time together today as we celebrate the Lord on this Christmas Sunday. God, I ask for your special blessings on every single person who's watching. I pray and claim the favor of God upon everyone, but may the joy of the Lord, the joy of Christ and Christmas, and may we all sing together the beautiful songs of redemption. May it be a beautiful sound that fills the whole world, fills this whole community, fills our hearts and our homes. We pray in the powerful name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Hey, God bless you. This is Pastor Troy again. I want to remind you, next Sunday, December 27th, we will be virtual only. Pastor Mark Short will be preaching a powerful message. You won't want to miss it. It'll be at the usual times, 9 o'clock and 1045. You can catch it there. And then come back and return with us on January the 3rd, the first Sunday of the year. Going to have a powerful Sunday. And we're going to have a great week of prayer, uh, uh, January 3rd through Saturday, January the 9th. We'll tell you a little bit more about it in the various, various means and methods to come. But God bless you and Merry, Merry Christmas.